So in this question, we're going to find the singularities and the residues of this function here. Now we've got pi squared, cosecant, pi z. Pi z is the input for cosecant. Um, pi squared here is just going to be a multiple. Pi squared, put it in your calculator, it's somewhere just under 10. And then we've got denominator 3z squared plus 1, where z is our complex variable. So first of all, we need to find the singularities before we even think about the residues. Now, the singularities are when this denominator is going to be zero in this case. So let's have a look at that. So 3z squared plus 1, let's set that to be zero. So 3z squared plus 1 equals zero. So let's get this uh, z solved for. So then we've got 3z squared equals minus 1. z squared equals minus 1 over 3. So therefore, z equals plus or minus square root of minus 1 over 3. OK, right. Now we can rewrite this a little bit. So we can rewrite that as z equals plus or minus square root of minus 1 over square root of 3. And then obviously here now, this square root of minus 1, we can just substitute in our complex number, imaginary number, i, in there. So therefore, z equals plus or minus i over square root of 3. So we've got two singularities here, and both are singularities, and they are simple poles of order 1. So that's what we've got there. So we've got simple poles. OK, right, so now we've got that, we can have a look at finding our residues. So what we're looking for now is the residues of our function f at positive i over root 3. And we need the residue of f at minus i over root 3. So that's what we're looking for. So let's go back to our function and see what we can do. Now, we've got 3z squared plus 1 in our denominator. And we could take the derivative of that and get 6z. Now, if we set 6z at either of these poles, that's not going to be 0. So what we can do is we can use something called the derivative rule, as I call it. Now, let's break this apart and let f of z equal g of z over h of z. Now, we've just established that the derivative of this h of z, so if I write here h prime of z equals 6z, h prime of z are either of these two poles, so h prime of z does not equal 0. So we're free to use the derivative rule. So Let's look at the first one. So the residue of f at i over root 3. Now we'll set this in terms of f of z. So we'll have g of z. Now we've got the derivative rule, so we're going to write in the bottom our denominator h prime of z. So that's what we need. OK, so... Here, our z is going to be our complex uh, number for our singularity. So let's do that. So now we've got pi squared cosecant pi times the value of our residue, which is i. So I'm just going to write i over root 3. That's our input for the cosecant function. And then our derivative, which is 6z, which is now going to be 6 times i over root 3. OK, right. Now, a few things we can do here. We've got i as our input into our cosecant function. Now, we can leave it as that. That would give us our answer. But when we're in complex analysis, it's always good if we can try and get the i out of our input for our trig functions. So we can use an identity. Now, we know... So we've got the hyperbolic cosecant function of some value x is the same as i times the cosecant function of ix. So this cosecant ix is what we've got here, but we don't have the i. So what I can do is I can divide both sides by i, and then I will have co 
secant of, well, hyperbolic cosecant function divided by i. These will cancel out, and I'll have got cosecant of ix. And that's our result there for our trig identity. So I'm going to leave that all separate here. OK, so we could put that into here and make our answer look a little bit more simple. So let's go now for inputting this. So we've got cosecant, hyperbolic cosecant of x. So we've got pi squared. Now, to transfer that, we'll have cosecant hyperbolic version of pi over root 3. Notice how we're taking the i out of it. But we also need to divide everything by i. So I can put an i in my denominator and that would take care of that. So we'll have i times 6 times i over root 3. OK, that takes care of that. Now let's do something with this denominator. I've got i times i. Well, that's just i squared. And we know i squared is minus 1. So we can substitute in a minus sign instead of having these two i's in there. So that's fine. So we can put a minus sign here. So let's do that. So we've got minus pi squared co secant hyperbolic version pi over root 3. Now here I've got 6 divided by root 3 now because I've got rid of my two imaginary units. So I've got 6 over root 3. Again this is still looking a bit untidy with this root 3 in the denominator of the denominator. So if I multiply by root 3 over root 3 I'm now going to get the result for my residue. So now I'm going to get the residue of my function at i over root 3. That equals, multiply top and bottom by root 3 to eradicate this root 3 here. That will then just become root 3. We'll cancel out because this is basically a root 3 over 1. If you look at it like that. Then I've got minus root 3 pi squared hyperbolic cosecant function pi over root 3 and then divide all that by 6. Now that's going to give me my first residue. Now I still need to calculate the other one at the minus version of this value here. So that's a good answer there. I'm happy to leave that as my residue result for that one. OK, right. Let's have a look at the residue at this value. Let's have a look at this one. So, putting in, I've left these identities up here and our result is now over here. Now, let's go for this one. So now our input is at minus i over root 3. So now my g of z, which is my numerator of my original question, cosecant pi times z. And then now we can to put in here now our derivative 6z so 6z let's write that in there first and let's fill in the values pi squared cosecant pi times minus i over root 3 so let's leave that like that for the moment i know it looks a bit untidy but let's just leave it at that and then times that by 6 so i've got 6 times minus i over root 3 OK, right, let's work it out what we've got from there. So we can go back into this identity and input that one in there. So now we'll have, let's just write the pi squared and its cosecant hyperbolic version, which is what we want. And then we've got minus i pi over root 3. So let's just write that up there now like that. And then my denominator. I've got minus 6i over root 3. So minus 6i over root 3. OK, right. Now my i here, I need, now I need to multiply with this one. So I need to multiply this all by i, just to make that valid for our substitution. OK, now I've got a minus inside this hyperbolic cosecant value here. Now there is also another trig identity here which I can use. So hyperbolic cosecant 
of minus x equals minus hyperbolic function of x. So basically I could take this minus and bring it out to the front of the cosecant value. So I can take this minus out of here and bring it out to the front. So I'm going to do that and simplify these two i's together. Remember as we did in the last residue, i squared is minus 1. So I can now basically cancel out this minus sign in here. So now I've got bring the minus sign out front. So I've got minus pi squared hyperbolic cosecant function pi over root 3. And then I've now i squared is minus 1. So that becomes a positive because I've got another minus sign in there. So now I've got 6 over root 3. And then we're back to where we was when we calculated this residue. I've got this 6 over root 3. So just to tidy that up, I've got root 3 over root 3 to multiply by. So then I'm going to get the same residue as I did for this one. So then my residue, I'll just write it up here. The residue of f at minus i over root 3 is basically the same as this one, which is what we've just got here. This root 3, we'll cancel that with this one. Then the root 3 I can just bring to the front. So I've got minus root 3 pi squared hyperbolic cosecant of pi over root 3, all divided by 6. And I'm happy with that as the result for my two simple poles of this function here. Okay.